Today we will be showing you how to replace the chassis for a Neo 200S HP style tape library. This replacement will require downtime and it should be scheduled with the system administrator. Please be advised that under no circumstances should you move any hardware other than your tape drives from the faulty library to the replacement. This includes both the control card and the magazines. There are many instances where we have seen one or both of these parts cause issues when moved from a faulty chassis to a replacement. If you move any hardware other than your tape drives from the faulty chassis to the replacement, you may cause irreparable failure to the replacement chassis and void your warranty. There are a few different reasons that you may have determined you need a chassis replacement for your Neo 200S HP style tape library. The first is if you have repeated robotics errors. The second is if you have communication issues with one or more tape drives and the replacement of those tape drives has not fixed your errors. Once you have determined that you need to replace the chassis, the first thing you will need to do is retrieve all of the unique settings from the library. These will include, but are not limited to, the network settings, dedicated cleaning settings, library mode, etc. You can view these settings from both the front panel of the library or from the web GUI. Once you have retrieved all your unique information, you will also need to remove all of the tapes from your library. The first way you can attempt this is by releasing the magazines through the front panel of the library. If there is a robotics error that persists and prevents you from unlocking the magazines through the front panel correctly, you will need to manually release the magazines once you have the library powered down and out of the rack. We will go over this procedure later in the video, but please keep watching from here. If the magazines unlock successfully, you will need to pull out all tapes of the, each magazine and ensure they are all empty before powering down the library. Now you will need to push the power button on the front of the library, and this will start the power down process and you will see it displayed on the front panel. The library should shut itself off after approximately 10 to 15 seconds. If the library has robotics issues that prevent it from performing the shutdown correctly, you may need to go around to the back of the library and pull out the power cord to power the library off. Once the library is powered off, you need to unplug the power cord from the back of the library if it was not already pulled out from the previous step. Then you will need to label all data cables going to the drives with their positions so that they can be reinstalled properly later. Once all data cables are labeled, you can unplug them from the backs of the tape drives, and you can also unplug the Ethernet cable from the remote management port if there is one installed. Once all cables are disconnected from the library, you will need to remove all tape drives from the rear before you uninstall the library from the rack. To remove the tape drives, loosen the blue thumb screws that hold each drive in, and then pull the drive straight back and out of the library. Once all drives are out of the library, move back around to the front of the library to uninstall it from the rack. When in front of the library, you may notice that the library has ears on the front that secure the library to the rack mount kit that it sits on. Not all libraries will have these ears installed, but if yours does and it is fastened to the rack mount kit, you will need to unscrew the ears from the rack mount kit before continuing. You will now need to uninstall the library from the rack by pulling it straight out and setting it to the side. If you are not able to remove the tapes from the library before powering it down earlier, you will now need to do so. To do this, you will need to push in the manual release lock on each side of the library that is located in the rear where the tape drives were installed previously. While holding in the lock on each side, you need to pull the magazine out partially and then you can release the lock. Do this for each side and then remove all tapes from all magazines before sliding them back into the empty chassis and setting it to the side. Now you are ready to install the replacement chassis. If you bought the replacement chassis from the Rocket Platform website, there will be a picker shifting lock installed in the top cover of the replacement chassis. This will be located underneath a small sticker in the center of the top cover. Upon removing the sticker, you should see a small piece of metal that prevents the picker from moving during transit. This needs to be removed before continuing. If you did not buy your replacement chassis from the Rocket Platform website, you should still double check this location to ensure there is no picker lock installed before proceeding. Now you can slide the replacement chassis into the rack and secure it with the rack mount screws if you have them. Then go around to the back of the library and install all tape drives into the replacement chassis. To do this, line up each drive with the black guide rails in the empty tape drive bay and slide it in until it makes contact with the back plane of the library. 
then pushed firmly to seat the drive completely and secured in place by tightening all thumb screws for the drive. Repeat this process for every drive until they are all installed correctly in the library. Now install all data cables going to the drives using the labeling that you did prior to uninstalling the old chassis. Also, plug the Ethernet cable into the remote management port on the chassis if there was one installed in the original. Last, plug all power cords back into the power supplies in the library. Go around to the front of the library and hit the power button to turn the library on. The library will now initialize. This can take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. Once the library is fully initialized, it will display the library name and then the drive status as ready on the library operator panel. Now you will need to set up your unique information that you retrieved from the faulty unit before uninstalling it. Once you have set up your unique information, you will need to restart the library for the new settings to take effect. At this point, you will need to reinsert all tape cartridges into the library. To do this, use the Magazine Unlock command from the operator panel of the library to unlock each side's magazines and insert all tapes before slotting the magazines back in. Once all tapes are inserted and the library goes back to ready, the replacement is complete. You will now need to reconfigure your backup software to be able to use the replacement library chassis. All backup software handles this process differently. For our purposes, since we use Symantec Backup Exec, we simply need to restart the services to allow the tape services to detect the replaced chassis. Your backup software procedure may be different. Any questions should be directed to your software support or manufacturer. If you are still seeing an error on the library chassis after replacing it, or you have any other issues, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA Video Production Team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.